Ricardo, I want to talk a little bit about the sources of income differences across country. I think economists have spent a lot of time and they've come to the conclusion that a lot of the differences in the differences in per capita income, for instance, across country are due to productivity. But we're not very clear on what exactly that productivity is and how it arises across countries. Well, I think that uh, people have tried to explain that by, you know, essentially attributing to something that they call technology. And the question is, what is technology? And I think that technology is really the conflation of three forms of knowledge. Embodied knowledge in tools. So if you have the tool, you don't have to know how to make the tool. You just have to use the tool. Hmm. Codified knowledge in, as in knowing that, knowing things about the world and that you can write books about and put it in documents and stuff. And then tacit knowledge in brains or know-how. Mm. Things that your brain knows how to do, you don't really know how to do in the same way as your brain knows how to walk, you don't really know how to walk, you don't know what it is that you do when you walk, <laughs> how you keep your balance, which muscles you move, etc. Probably thinking so, about it makes it worse. <laughs> I think so. Right? Actually, there are some tennis players that choke when they have to think too much. That's right. so, so essentially, the problem of implementing technology is to make sure that you have the tools, the codified knowledge, the codes, and the know-how. And the know-how only resides in brains. And many technologies, if you think of making the run trains on time or doing an operation, requires not just one person knowing. Mm. It requires coherent teams of people knowing different things and collaborating in the implementation of that technology. So I think tools move easily in containers, codes move easily even on the web, mm. right? But know-how moves with enormous difficulty from brain to brain. We know how long it takes us to train a PhD. <laughs> and what is the guy doing? He, I mean, he took two years of courses and he stayed for four more years. The only yeah. thing he's doing there is through imitation, repetition, imitation, repetition. He sort of like gets it, right? And that's how we train doctors. That how, that's how we train bakers. That's how we train musicians. Imitation, repetition until the brain rewires itself. It's not transmitted through understanding. And because of that, know-how has an enormous difficulty moving from city to city, firm to firm, and country to country. Hmm. And uh, unfortunately, uh, we have been remiss at understanding the important role of moving people with know-how rather than try to move the know-how without the people. Hmm. And, and the world has you know, discovered that a long time ago. I mean, that's the way know-how moves between firms. That's the way know-how moves between cities of the same country. And that's the way know-how moves internationally. But one of the really damning things about, about developing countries that has not been sufficiently discussed is that they are amazingly close to immigration. And in particular, they are dramatically close to skilled immigration. Hmm. Because unskilled immigration can come in and nobody can control it. But the skilled immigration works in formal companies that uh, have to abide by the rules. They're supervised and stuff. And it's amazing how in country after country, they put limits, you know, 10% maximum foreigners, mm. or in, in the Democratic Republic of Congo, 6% maximum foreigners, or in other countries, they have a maximum of one foreigner per firm, and that's it. <laughs> so so um, uh, this is a machine that stops the process of technological diffusion. It's a machine that increases inequality, because you have very few skilled people at the top that then go make out like bandits, and you cannot really stop immigration at the bottom, so that's a machine to expand inequality in developing countries. Hmm. And I think it has first order effects on the capacity of countries to absorb uh, technology and grow. Hmm. So we need to move people around the world as well as just tools and uh, the internet. We need, we need people, we need, we need to exploit our diasporas abroad because they might come back in or they might help us understand things while they stay where they are. Uh, we want migrants coming in and we should treat our diasporas in a better way, uh, the diasporas within and our diaspora outside. And you know, when foreign companies come in, they in part bring in their expats and they, we have to let those expats in because they think they need them to run the organization. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you.